on the rock of Jesus and the fact that he is the son of God sacrificed for the forgiveness of our sins and he opened the door for a right relationship with God for all who believe in him. I believe this not because it is written in a book or because someone told me I had to believe it, but because God has written it on my heart and it runs within the blood in my veins. And now I step down off of my soapbox onto humble ground with the rest of my religious beliefs, and so should you. And this is why. As I have said before, we have very little knowledge or understanding of God and his plans or his ways. just a drop in the bucket of who God is and his plan for us. Regardless of how sure we think we are of our individual interpretations of the Bible or beliefs. When it comes to stuff like praying to Mary and the saint, spiritual gifts and speaking in tongues, Peter being the foundation of the Christian church and apostolic succession, proper baptismal techniques, the mysteries surrounding heaven and hell, the sinfulness of homosexuality, the age of the earth and evolution, the details and the, of the end times, and so on. With these and other biblical issues, you believe one thing, I believe something else, and he believes something else. In our arrogance, we tend to harbor judgment and prejudice towards other Christians and churches who do not share our same theology. Unfortunately, we seem to think that we have more power than we do when it comes to spiritually saving the lives of others. We often leave the work of the Holy Spirit out of the salvation picture completely because we think that perfect religious knowledge can save people. I mean, let's face it, apart from Jesus, no one will ever be saved by so-called correct theology. I would think if God had required us to have a perfect understanding of himself, or the Bible, he would have clearly spelled it out, spelled out every detail for us. As it is, he did not. How ignorant for any of us to think we absolutely have God and his plans figured out. Within any given Christian church, there are people who truly love the Lord and have the Holy Spirit running through their veins, and there are those who do not. How sinfully arrogant of us to attempt to judge another Christian for their beliefs or what is in their heart. God demanded that we do not spiritually judge others. point let's take a look at this mountain this is the mountain of biblical knowledge and Jesus the Sun here is shining love on the front side of the mountain the back side of the mountain is not completely dark but as you can see it's kind of shaded we all start our spiritual lives right here somewhere at the base of the mountain down in here Nowadays, most of us take the chairlift partway up the mountain by attending church and getting biblical knowledge fed to us that way. Chairlift, okay? 
But where the chairlift ends, we must begin to climb on foot the rest of the way by reading the Bible for ourselves and or seeking other biblical education such as books, seminars, church classes, or even seminary school. Some people never climb past the end of the chairlift in you know their pursuit of biblical knowledge. They just hang out at the chalet and drink Bloody Marys the rest of their lives. But some of us climb higher on the mountain of knowledge and inevitably the higher we climb the more we look down at the people who are not climbing. So we're climbing up here. On the shady side of the mountain as we climb we even push other people off the mountain that do not agree with our beliefs and biblical ideas as we're kind of climbing up the mountain of knowledge here. After all, there can be only one king of the mountain, only one person who has all the right beliefs and answers, right? The top of the mountain of knowledge is where some stand in supreme judgment over the spiritual lives and beliefs of other Christians. Right up, standing in the shadow, right here, looking down. Some lay people and religious leaders remain here the rest of their lives, but it's lonely at the top. Those who remain, you know, up in here struggle to, to love other people and probably have a rather strained relationship with God as well. They usually have very few friends and often lose the friends they once had. Not only that, they still have not entered into the loving sunshine. All this light area over here, this is where Jesus is hitting the mountain. And if we're staying on this little cliff right here at the top of the mountain, we're not entering the sunshine, the loving sunshine of Jesus that is on the other side of the mountain. Those who press on by swallowing their arrogance make it to the other side of the mountain where Jesus' love for humanity begins to truly fill our hearts as we climb back down the mountain of knowledge into the green valley. So once you get over the top, this is where you really start to have the love of Jesus and feel Jesus' love in your heart. This, the valley down here, the valley of God, is where we enter God's rest. This is where our overeducated brains and hearts begin to find peace and we begin to actually love others as Jesus loved people. We all have our own beliefs, traditions, and dogmas that we believe to be true and that is fine. You know, they are tools in step by step getting to know and draw closer to God. Some of, some of our beliefs are a step closer to God and we sometimes realize over time that some of our beliefs have actually been a step down on the ladder of drawing closer to God. It's all a part of the lifelong spiritual journey we are all on. God recently gave me a vision of how we should see ourselves within ministry. He showed me that you and I are tools he uses to build his kingdom here on earth. Therefore, a screwdriver cannot say to a hammer that God does not want to use it to build a church any more than an Assembly of God church can say to a Catholic church that God is not using them to build his kingdom. We were all uniquely created and God reaches each of us where we are and uses all of his churches here on earth to varying degrees to draw nearer to his creation. So I beg you, put an end to religious judgment of each other and other churches and other Christians because you know, none of us are perfect. There is good and bad in all of it. It is God's business to reveal truth to each of us and to pass judgment, not ours. We are powerless to change people's hearts. Only the Holy Spirit has this power, and the Holy Spirit's effectiveness does not rely on us beating others over the head with our individual ideas of what is correct biblical interpretation. Spread the gospel of Jesus Pray for Christians and churches that appear to be spiritually struggling and learn to love others the way Jesus did by swallowing your arrogance and making your way to the other side of the mountain of knowledge where Jesus is shining his love and love enters your heart. Put a leash on your judgmental thoughts and visit under other Christian churches you know, in the spirit of Christian brotherhood and not with the spirit of religious judgment. That's all for today, gang. God bless and have a great week.
Ready?